Hey guys, what's going on? If you're like me, you just searched YouTube for how to sneak alcohol onto a cruise ship safely without getting caught. So that's what this video is about. Let me show you how it's done. So step one would be getting your alcohol of choice. For me, it's Jack Daniels, but you can choose whatever, vodka, etc. doesn't matter. Uh, you can, this works for any type of alcohol and you'll see why. All right, so each typical bottle of wine holds, Let's see, I'll show you the label. 750 milliliters and you're not going to get one of these in fact i'm not buying any wine from this store i'm going to go to the cheapest bottle of wine i find because i'm emptying out the contents to fill it up with the whiskey so i don't need anything spectacular all right so see 750 milliliters and the reason why i'm pointing that out is the smaller bottles are 750 milliliters. Larger ones are 1.75. So if you didn't want to have to mark the bottle and measure it, this is exactly the same amount of alcohol in one of these bottles that goes into a bottle of wine. So there's no deviating on the volume in the bottle. Because that's something that will give it away. You have to be exact on the measurement on the level inside the wine bottle that I'm about to do. All right, y'all, on a side note, I'm deviating because I'm walking towards the checkout, but y'all keep this tucked in the back of your mind. These plastic, like, flask, this is called shark skins, but um, notice how there's no metal anywhere on these things? So you could fill this up if you wanted to, and you could literally keep them on your body when you walk through the metal detectors, and they will not go off, and you can do that anywhere. It doesn't have to be a cruise ship. You can take at a, like a sporting event where they have metal detectors and fill these up with whiskey, go inside and, you know, get a regular Coca-Cola at the thing that's refillable, by the way. And then you just walk into, usually people walk into a stall in the restroom at the game and just dump a full one in there. And then you got a potent drink for the game and um, last you forever and you get free refills. So then you can use like three of these you make three restroom breaks, three refills of your Coke, and then you're good to go for the whole game. All right, so I'm off to the grocery store where they have basically the cheapest wine in the area. It used to be a lot cheaper, but the pandemic and inflation and everything else, I mean, I can go on a rampant with that, but I'm going to pick up the wine now, and I'm gonna pick up a couple bottles. And um, in case you're wondering, I ended up picking up the large bottle of Jack just because I like a good deal and it's kind of crazy the prices on the cruise ship what they charge for drinks so well worth the investment and the time to do everything that I'm doing right now. All right choices choices for wine let's see what I can find here. I am going for a dark skinned bottle and the cheapest one I can find is usually the store brand. All right, y'all, so once you pick out the two bottles that you want, it doesn't really matter. I just did a mix, so it looks like maybe we're trying two different wines out on the ship, but um, pick out whatever you want. If you're actually gonna do the drinking at your house while you're doing the switch, then pay up a little bit and get a bottle of wine that you actually want to drink while you're doing this project at home. But one thing you need to pay attention to is the top labels. While you're buying the, the bottle of wine, here, I'm gonna see if I can't position my phone here and show you what I'm gonna to do to test right. out. So, when you're buying the bottle, it's, you should be able to twist this foil top. See that one? I just tested it out. You can, you can twist it. This one, I just tested it out. I can twist it, okay? So these are all heat sealed also, which is something that you're gonna um, learn in just a little bit after I get done doing this. At the end of the video, you'll see why it's important to have this so it twists. 
and then because we're going to be putting it back on and sealing it so the people at the cruise ship um, they're going to see it as sealed and they're not going to see any obstructions or anything else they have no reason to think that the bottle's been tampered with so i got my two bottles let's go to the house show you how the trick's done six dollars and forty cents for two bottles of wine not bad make sure when you buy your bottles of wine when you check out that you get two of these plastic bags you'll see why as the video goes through all right y'all so i am back at the house i got everything laid out i'm going to show you everything you'll need to do this trick and then we'll get started. You can see it in action. You can see how long it takes, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gone for eight days. So I splurged. I got the bigger 1.7 ounce, 1.75. Each one of these is 750 milliliters. So I'm gonna use both bottles. And I don't know if you can see in the light. Let's see if you could show. Oh, it looks like you got a little reflection there. But here's what I'm paranoid about is if you look at the light through this, it's kind of like the amber feel. And then here you have like the red hue. So when I go through security, I think that the only thing that possibly could get me in trouble or um, raise an eyebrow would be the color difference if I'm if they look through a bright light and see that it's not necessarily red. So I went ahead and spent two dollars to get some red food coloring that, you know, there's no taste or anything like that. And then when I'm on the cruise ship, I'm gonna be dumping it into Coca-Cola anyway. So I don't care what color it is, it's not gonna show up anyway. And it's not gonna affect the taste of the Jack Daniels either. Um, so I got the food coloring, I got my two bottles of wine, whatever you chose. You got whatever alcohol you're wanting to bring on. You've got a dime which you'll see why. I already mentioned the food coloring. I have like a screwdriver. You could use a Phillips. I'm using a flathead. Some sort of mallet or hammer. You're gonna need these bags that I mentioned already in the video. These are gonna be very important. And then some sort of container to dump the wine in as you empty the wine. That's everything. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick panoramic of everything just so you can write the notations if you're at the house right now Jotting down notes so you can go on your shopping spree. So here. Let me cut the video. I'll show you what I got All right, so the couple bottles of wine there's the alcohol now I can maybe show you better on this now Like See that red hue Okay, so that's what I'm worried about, that they might see a difference when that is obviously like an amber. So when I add this red food coloring into the bottle when it's filled, then you'll see what else. There's the dime food coloring, the two bottles of wine, your liquor of choice, screwdriver, hammer, two uh, like, bags from the grocery store and some sort of container and I almost forgot to mention you need to get like a sharpie or a pencil and I'll explain that while I'm doing the video and there's the pencil and the reason I'm gonna use the pencil is because I'm gonna have to mark see where it's leveled I'm gonna mark that on the bottle right here I'm gonna mark that line because surprisingly enough if you look at you know thousands of bottles per day going through your port or your entry, you get to know where that line is. And if it's not the pretty damn close, when you look at it, you're gonna know something fishy is up. So I'm gonna be making sure that the bottle is the same exact measurement when I'm done on the finished product. All right, so first things first, and let me get here, I'll push this back so you can see me a little bit better here. All right, so, we got the bottles and I had already kind of mentioned, but this top, you should twist. When you buy it, it's even better if you're at the store. Make sure that it twists pretty easy because what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly like work it up. You don't wanna damage or rip it. You wanna be pretty careful, 
but you want to kind of turn this foil like up and turn at the same time so you're not damaging it. Be as careful as possible. Okay, it's coming. I'm just I'm going slower than normal, but here you go. I just took the foil off without cutting it or doing anything crazy. See, there we go. So keep that, tuck it aside. So now I have the cork and the bottle. And if you notice, this dime fits right there. So it does not obstruct or hit the glass at all. It covers basically the whole face of that cork. Because what you're trying to do is, it's a telltale sign if I were to use a, um, a cork mechanism to pull out the cork, you'll see a big spiral effect or you'll see like a puncture hole, etc. But if you don't see a puncture hole at all, then how the heck are they gonna think that this was ever tampered with? Because the people that are swapping out alcohol and just simply putting the cork back in with a hole, it's gonna show up. They can actually see it in x-ray if you see a little nick in the, um, the cork at all. So that's one of the things that I am avoiding and the reason how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put that dime at the top and then this screwdriver is gonna go right here and then I'm using this and basically essentially what I'm doing is I am pushing the cork into the bottle and it's a pretty fast process that you gotta, you gotta do pretty quickly because what happens when the cork um, gets fully submerged into that wine? It's gonna start a process of swelling up, which is only gonna be detrimental to the whole finished product when you're trying to put the cork back in and shove it back into place where it should be. Uh, I should mention that you wanna take a mental note as to the height of the cork in association with the bottle because that's essentially where it's gonna be when you finish putting the you know, I have whiskey, but any type of alcohol, whatever you put in there. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna gently start pushing this cork down into the bottle. Once it gets to the level where I can tell it's about to fall in, I'll take the dime away, I'll take that out of the equation, and then I'll get over here, and I will push it finally all in, dump all the wine into the container, and then I'll show you what the next step is. So let me go ahead and knock this out. And you gotta be pretty careful because obviously you don't wanna break any glass or have it shatter on anything. I mean, I'm defacing it. There it goes, okay. It took a little bit of work, but it is Actually, I can even show you, give you a bird's eye view of what's going on here. All right, so I just did a, a, just friendly little taps and see how it's going down. And I'll keep doing that until it gets to the point where I know that it's about to hit that neck and go and drop. Once it gets to that, then that's where I'll stop using the dime because I don't want the dime to fall in even though it really doesn't matter. Um, and then I'll be emptying all the contents into this container. So let me get going. All right, y'all, so I'm back. I'm gonna drop the cork in. I'm gonna hit it almost where it's about to fall in. It gets easier to hit as it gets loose. It's getting there. Make sure all the 
whole line is out. Woo! You can smell that red. Okay. So now I'm stuck with, there's the dime. The dime did fall in, but it'll fall out pretty quick. All right, I got the dime out. Now I've got a cork that's free floating in there. See? Here's where the trick is. You want to get the cork out of the bottle without damaging the cork so you can reuse it to resurface the foil with the cork and it doesn't look like there's been any tampering. So that's why you're going to be able to sneak it in is because the cruise ship is not going to x-ray and see any type of deviated cork or foil. That's how we're going to work. All right, I'm going to rinse off my hands real quick. I got some red stain going on. And I know most of y'all found me doing a search on YouTube, so thanks for coming, checking my station out and looking at the video. If you learn anything and this actually works for you, feel free to hit the like button and uh, cheers and do a toast while you're on the ship, right? Okay. All right, so now this is where this bag comes in. As crazy as it sounds, we're going to use this bag to get the cork out of the bottle. So you kind of like... String it, make it look so it's nice and narrow. And we're gonna shove this bag down into the bottle. If you have to, kind of turn it while you're pushing it down in there. Okay. And so now, we're gonna make a little cat and mouse game here where we're gonna position the cork into the plastic. And if you want to be really safe, you can do it over the container of wine because it might just leak out some residuals. All right, see how I'm working the bag and the cork's right there? All right, so I have the bag pretty far up. Now, we're gonna kind of maneuver the bag in a way where we can put some air into it. Let me see here. All right. That's pretty good. That's working. Okay. Okay. So see what's going on? The cork is down there. I'm gonna blow air in it, and then I'm gonna gradually pull this down, and it's gonna grab I don't know if you could see it, but the air in the bag is grabbing around the cork. I'm trying my best to show you, but seeing what's going on. Now it might take a little bit of, it is definitely coming out. Let me show you where I'm at. See the cork? All right, that's what it is. Don't worry about the bag situation. Nope, that what it went. Boom. It is officially out of here, guys. And I have a cork that is not damaged, punctured by one of the screw, corkscrew things, whatever you have. So now I got a cork that's never been touched or altered and I have a bottle that I'm gonna use to fill the Jack Daniels. 
Let me rinse this out real quick, just so I don't get a wine taste mixed with the Jack, but the food coloring obviously won't add anything to influence the taste. All right, so I got a bottle that's nice and dry, and I should have done this before, but I'm gonna do it now, because I have two bottles the same, but I'm gonna measure where the line is, and I'm gonna put a little mark on pencil on the glass, that way, when I'm filling up the jack into the wine bottle, I make sure that it's the exact same height as it should be whenever they look at it. All right, so it's right at the bend. I got it. And obviously, if you have another one, you can just compare it to it and eye it. You don't necessarily have to mark it if you really don't want to. All right, let's go ahead and start filling this bad boy up. What do y'all think? Pretty cool trick, right? If you haven't hit the like button, now that you just learned that, I expect you to, or hopefully you would, because the, uh, the way the YouTube algorithm works is if people hit the like button, then it tells YouTube that, hey, this video might be pretty good for other people to see. So um, you'll be helping others find this video so they can enjoy their careers without having to pay a $800 what, what's that, the drink package that they have? That's what, going, that's what they tried to charge me, and I was like, wait a second here. I don't recommend using your teeth to open up a bottle, but you, know, you can yell at me in the comments if you want to. The reason why I chose the big bottle instead of just bringing one small is because I'm gonna be on that boat for eight days. And I think that might help, but a little tiny one, no, nah, that wouldn't have worked. Um, I'm gonna grab, you know what? I think I'm gonna grab some sort of like funnel because that'll help me put pour it in here. Or you can get like a, um, like a spout, like a measuring one that has a spout. You can do it the same way. Cause you wanna be careful not to have the alcohol drip on the outside of the glass and then it'll be like a smell that you don't wanna have to mess with. You know what I mean? All right. Wow, talk about convenient. I don't know where I had this from, but boom, that goes right into there. That's gonna be perfect. All right, let's start pouring. Obviously you wanna be careful not to get any drip because and I'm sure they'll be able to smell it if they wanted to. So once I get this in here, I'm gonna show y'all a side-by-side -side of what the difference is just on if you didn't use the coloring that I'm using. And y'all can tell me if you think that it would be flagged. I know I'm going slower, but I'm trying to be careful here, guys. Almost there. Wow, it's deceiving how much goes in there. Okay, that's about good. And yeah, there's a clear difference. I'm glad I got the coloring. So that's how much one bottle of wine cleared out of that 1.75. And let me be careful with that. show you the difference right now well you can see it already there see in the light the difference between the red and the Jack Daniels so there is a difference now let's do a let's do a before and after with the food coloring and maybe I will yeah this would be a good angle for you guys I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna put some drops of the food coloring and you'll see how it changes in color real quick. All right, so here is the before. See how dark that is compared to that amber, even though it's a darker glass. So now we're gonna put the food coloring in and I'm gonna just use this as the control, this as the experiment. And we're gonna keep dropping in the red food coloring until it gets as close to this as possible. bending down so I can kind of see the color as I add it. 
I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be perfect, but as close to possible. That way you're trying to, wow, this stuff is really red. Look at that. Looks like blood almost. Okay, let's go to town. Yep, it's darkening it. Oh no. It's really darkening it. But the problem is, is I added liquid. I'm gonna have to empty some of this out to that level because now I influenced. Okay, so I should have left a little bit less knowing that I was gonna fill up the food coloring to add more liquid into it. So let me go ahead and empty some of this out. But let me see how it got dark. I mean, as long as it's red, I don't think they're gonna raise any flags on it. So what I should have done, hindsight 2020, right? I should have filled it up, leaving about a half inch below the line of the control bottle, knowing that I was gonna fill it up to the line with the food coloring. So now I'm having to, I already put the red in there, so now I'm just dumping this in to even the line up. Trip it. There, we're good guys. Okay. So now, I've got the cork that I'm gonna push back down into it. And then the foil is the last. Make sure my hands are clean. I'm gonna use a clean part of the towel because I don't wanna put a big fingerprint or thumbprint or anything on the actual cork just in case they happen to take off the foil to see the cork. It's, it's pretty snug, but it's gotta be snug, right? Remember to kind of go what it was before. Okay, so there we go, guys. Cork is back in. Here we go. We've got a red, well, it's Jack Daniels with red food coloring. And then now, and then I compared it to the height of this, which is the same. And let's put the foil back on that you put onto the side carefully. And now it's going to be snug. I'm gonna say I recommend cleaning your hands. If you got any re residue of the food coloring or the actual wine itself when you were dumping, because we don't want any smudges, any red flags on the bottle. We want it to look like a bottle that you just literally bought off the store shelf and put in your luggage. Wow, that food coloring is not as easy to get off as you might think. All right, hands are clean, boom. Okay, so now I'm gonna whittle this back on trying to be careful obviously you don't want to rip the foil or anything else now there is if you don't want to mess with this do you do have the capability of going on like eBay or Amazon and they actually sell these foil toppers that you can um, buy 
and they already come like ready to be used in this exact situation because a lot of people make their own wine and they need that foil for their tops of their bottles. Here it is. Boom, it just slipped right on like a glove, guys. You tell me. How are they gonna know? I feel like I'm doing that GIF, right? How are they gonna know? It's a red bottle of wine. It's sealed, the cork hasn't been touched, no holes in it, no nothing. It just looks like a bottle of red, right? So now I'm gonna basically rinse and repeat, do exactly what I just did on this other bottle, and I'll have two ready to go. I don't know what else I can tell you guys. Uh, the food coloring, uh, that was the only misstep that I didn't put in the directions initially is you wanna fill up the Jack Daniels and leave room like maybe a half inch below the line that you're trying to uh, meet that you had marked on the bottle with either Sharpie or pencil or you don't even have to. If you have another bottle to compare it to, just put side by side, that's what I did. Um, but it's a pretty easy process. I don't see how there could be any red flags for the cruise line. And uh, hopefully it works for you. Thanks for watching this far. Don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to see my videos that I make on the cruise line, because I'm going to be doing a video of each port that I go to. On this cruise, I'm going to Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, it's called. And um, it'll be an eight-day cruise. And I'll be doing a tour of the ship where you could see everything. I'll be doing a tour of the casino so you can see all of the different games and the table games, the slots, and uh, I'll do cuts and segments of what machines actually paid me really well. So people that happen to go on the same ship I go on, they will um, maybe get a little tidbit or a cliff note as to what machines are actually hitting or paying out versus others. Um, and then obviously a tour of the ship or tips and tricks that I found and what restaurants were good, where the ice cream machine is, et cetera, et cetera. So all those type of um, videos, you can go ahead, subscribe, and you'll see those um, probably dropped within the next week or two once I get back from the cruise itself. Um, and then I'll have to render it and edit it and everything else. So it takes a little bit of time, but I'll be doing that probably while I've been on the ship after each port call is done with. Uh, thanks again. I'll stop ranting. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If it, if it helped you, come back, leave a comment. Let me know how things went. Have a good time on the ship, guys. Take care. Peace. All right, y'all. So it took me about three or four hours for the actual luggage to arrive to the room outside and um, I did check it in. I didn't carry it on with me through the screening process when I got to the ship. Um, and I'm gonna show you what I actually did when I did check it in because I did fly, I didn't drive to the ship um, from Texas to Florida. We flew to Florida. So for safety precautions, I did put it in like a, um, like a freezer bag, shrink bag. Um, that way if something happened and it was mishandled or beat up in transit, if it did explode in my luggage, um, it didn't get all over the place and ruin my clothes for the cruise. Um, so I did do that, checked it in. It went through the whole process of being on the caravans through the shuttle and like went underneath and went through the screening, whatever x-rays and it got through everything. And now I'm gonna show you where it's at. And here you go. So here's the bottles of wine. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's what it looks like. It's like a red tinted Jack Daniels cork. Everything's good to go. And these are sealed bags. So if something happened and they accidentally exploded or whatever, it wouldn't get all over my clothes. So that's about it, guys. Success. I mean, um, oh, I guess I should also mention that I did not bring a bottle opener to do the corks. But they are available. If you just call up whoever's your room attendant, they will bring one to you. And that's what I'm waiting for right now. He's going to come up and then I'm going to open them up. That should be good. And have fun wherever you might go. Take care, guys. Peace.
So this is 